Uh, I think okay, I can record perfect. that. Perfect. All right, so let's start. Let's welcome Prime Minister. We shall eat up tonight. Just for food. Am I audible and visible? <laughs> yeah, you are. Okay, let me just set my timer and I begin my speech. No. So I reached there. So I'm going to start my speech in three, two, one. Panel, constantly viewing negative things tunes your mind to negative, right? In a world where people view their government negatively, we need a way to push people closer to the government, right? In order to create a more sustainable development, right? Now, what is political fiction in this instance, right? Three issues here. A, this is when literature uses its capacity to comment on political systems and theories, i.e. it can be expressed through books, movies, or like different plays that actually perform these instances. B, it, is, it has a high viewership as it is a source of entertainment to different groups of people and like a source of information, right? This is like the children feel cartoons and like novels and like voters to actually see who to vote or like how they actually vote, right? Moving on secondly, it can be based on current political events, past political events, the future or even alternate worlds without necessarily portraying what happened in those events, but you can pick um, some sort of inspiration to make like these sorts of things, right? Panel, this debate is on whether fiction should take a positive outlook towards politics or a negative outlook towards politics, right? What is the impact of fiction on the lives of people? First of all, due to like the high viewers it has, right? It has the power to create narratives that influence personal opinions and like personal decisions, like how we actually perceive our governments, how we actually perceive our governments, how we relate to our governments. Secondly, it has the power to influence public opinion and how we perceive other groups in society. That is to say groups that are affiliated to the government, groups that carry out voting processes and all those political things. Now, that is basically what it actually does on like the different kinds of people, right? Now let's look at politics in of itself, right? Politics is a sector in the society that deals with governing how a particular system in a society actually works, right? Panel, basically it makes decisions for people like policies or like different mandates on different things like drugs, right? Now, we have to understand the politics are here to stay and henceforth, we need to find ways to work with politics in order to create a more sustainable development, right? Panel, not that in this debate today, we do not take away negative and pessimistic fiction, right? But we make majority of the fiction positive and optimistic. So this is like a premise that side negative can actually bend in and actually make it like particular case in this instance, right? Now, pardon, what does negative political fiction look like in of itself? A, it looks like politicians always marginalizing. It looks like how governments are always benefiting themselves in decisions and are like corrupt at that particular point in time. It looks like expressing images of governments not giving people freedom of speech, governments killing people, governments silencing people. Right, it looks like stereotypes, right? It looks like how politicians lie about opposition and politicians are praised what opposition actually says in the vast majority of instances, right? Now, what does positive political fiction actually look like at this instance, right? It looks like painting better images of like different politicians and like how like they tell people like how they make policies that actually lead to the development of the society, right? It looks like expressing governments that expressing governments that allow people to express themselves, right? People to express their alternative views, people to actually engage in what government policies they want, people to actually bring themselves out and connect with like these different governments. Looks like good policies that politicians make, like let me say policies that help people get food, policies that help people like get vaccinated, all those sorts of good policies that help like the governments or like that help the different people in the society. Well, that is what positive political fiction actually looks like in the vast majority of instances, right? Now, what is our case for today, right? I'm going to handle A, why trust <coughs> is important in the development of the nation, right? Secondly, why we reduce on the humanitarian crisis in our world that would have arose due to like the pessimistic views, right? Secondly, our second is going to handle, right? Further on our analysis, actually, our world is legitimate and how it actually makes and like for a more sustainable development, right? Panel. 
First of all, why trust is important in the development of a nation. We have to first understand what is trust, right? Trust is basically a form of belief, right? When you believe in someone, when you believe in a system, right, that you actually take in and like you believe in and like you actually denote to what that system actually takes you, right? Now, when your governments are actually trusted, right, it's the policy that actually runs smoothly, right? It is easy for the government to run their policies smoothly, making right it is is it actually both when citizens of a nation actually trust their different governments right now what do we see in their side of the house right their world has different stereotypes right when people are constantly fed with negative points about the government like to to some sort of ideology that our governments are bad our governments are not here to help us we got in these governments and they don't give us what we are supposed to get right now basically even if one government member out of the 20 does something bad they are more inclined and they are more likely to actually generalize the whole government as bad right they generalize the government and they paint a bad image about their government so what does this particularly lead to right it is harmful because citizens then start opposing their government right citizens then start not following the things that the government actually put up to help them right at this particular point in time citizens start abusing like their sorts of governments and they start like promoting public discourse to go against like these sorts of governments right now that is particularly what their world actually looks like but what does our world look like right we give them more good views it's not like we separate it's not like we remove the bad views right then we give them more good views right when we give them more good views majority of people are going to watch them and it's going to create better correlation between the governments and the people because the government the people are actually able to understand what the different governments go through how these different governments actually help them to do what they're supposed to do and like basically how these governments actually serve to their people to like these different sorts of countries and this leads to like more development because we trust and develop with trust and like better working conditions you can develop your nation for a better cause secondly in their world hope is reduced right when one is pessimistic, right, they, they believe the worst will always happen. They do not believe that their governments can actually work right. Now, why is this particularly harmful and why does it arise? Because you've given them pessimistic views, right? If there was no hope, right, people would live careless lives, right? People would live lives and they like won't vote for people who actually are worthy of these things, right? Well, that's what we see in the world, right? They vote for people just because they're supposed to vote, but they do not vote for these people because like they know that these people are going to work because they know after all these people aren't going to work for these people are not going to do some other things, right? These views are implemented in their heads and basically people don't actually hold their governments accountable because they do not see the use of holding things that do not actually work out for them, right? They have a very negative outlook on life and a negative outlook on these like, different governments, right? Secondly, in our world, hopeful and confident we're actually hopeful and confident about the government that is to say we give our trust and we hope that they actually work for us and this basically pushes this government to like come and like they work for us it pushes this government to come and like they fulfill the policies that they were supposed to fulfill because they see their citizens actually want them to fulfill them and they would actually want to be voted back into power by these citizens who actually trust them right why are humanitarian crisis is reduced on our side right in their world people revolt against governments because they see only the negative outlook on like these different sorts of governments right basically these governments respond by shutting down these people they like in uganda they actually take you they beat you up they torture because you have actually opposed it. Let's take a look of China, right? China neglects its citizens, it beats them up a bit, right? We see less public discourse, and we see like these governments are less likely to come and like commit humanitarian crises on like their side and all those sorts of evils, right? Panel, we go for a world which actually gives the citizens the better pessimistic ideologies and hope in their governments for a more sustainable development for their governments. Thank you. All right, I thank the speaker for the speech. Let's welcome Leader of Bob. Thank you. My speech starts in three. Two. I'll, start, I'll start things off by saying that not, not everything that happens in the world isn't in this world is easy. If you want to get things done, you work hard. You have to shed blood and tears to make things work. If you want to get a good and proper job or else, 
if you want, if you, so if you want things go, if you want, so if you want things go to the easy way, you'll never make it into this world. That's why I'm here to give you a reality check. If the political fiction is a positive and optimistic, it's all false. Politics isn't all about that. How do you think America became the strongest country through strong and powerful choices? Hence politics. The world can be a dark place filled with gore and greed. That's politics. Before I get to Margie, but I have three rebuttals. You're stating that political fiction when positive, uh, when you're stating that political, uh, political fiction when positive, they have str uh, powerful opinions. Let me remind you that it doesn't need to be powerful, but needs to be true. Those are two different words. Political, uh, you also stated that political fiction when negative has negative benefits. I mean, the negative side is the, the negative side basically is the truth. The reality of the side, I mean, I'm getting, trying to giving you uh, the reality of the, the things are right now. Also, you didn't say the, the specific types of negative benefits. So I would like the second speaker to state the negative benefits of the negative side. You're also stating you're also saying that the you're also stating that they have a negative outlooks. If it's negative, it doesn't mean it's true. To start off with, uh, I have three things. I have three words to define. Political fiction. Political fiction uh, uses story uh, storytelling to comment on current events, political structures, and theories. Political, uh, political novels, for example, frequently directly critique a currently society and depict an alternate, even fancy reality. Definition two, pessim uh, pessimistic. It is a negative mental attitude in which an unfo uh, unfavorable outcome from a particular scenario is predicted, which is on our side is, uh, is the right side. Definition three, a propaganda. Propaganda is communication that is primarily used to influence or persuade an audience to further an agenda, which may or not may not even be an objective and may include selectively presenting facts to encourage a particular synthesis or, or perception or using loaded language to elicit uh, an emotion rather than a rational response to the inform information being used. So where's our stance? Our stance is we oppose the, uh, we oppose the status quo of having a world where majority of fossil fiction should be a positive and optimistic rather than pessimistic and negative. We do, not need to, uh, we, do not, we do not need to provide and counterfactual or not all we need to do is prove you why pessimism in political news should be encouraged before i move on to our first arguments in today in today's debate what are the principal parameters within this debate to take place first uh, first argument it will give people a sense of reality more realistic and prevent giving viewers readers false hope which you which you stated that that false hope is a good thing uh, but 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 i but i counter that which i will explain uh, throughout this debate it can reduce propaganda influence. So it will give people a sense of, uh, so the first argument has three routes to this. The, the first route, help people think more objectively, helps people uh, uh, think more objectively rather than subjectively. A reality check is basically when an occasion, is, is an occasion on which uh, one is reminded of the stated things in the real world. Like, like you can't, uh, you, you know, in mental hospitals and that kind of stuff, they're all, they're all out of their mind. So they, they got to get a reality check, most li likely uh, using this analogy, just like on, the, on this type of debate. Second, when reading or watching a movie, uh, uh, per, uh, when reading or watching a movie, a person's mind is mostly focused on that specific type of movie. And this generation that can make a lot of things uh, look real. So if you're going to give them fake political fiction, because not all, polit uh, not all politics is easy and optimistic, they can also be hard and uh, and maybe maybe some people can't take that that type of heat uh third of all the ability to distinguish between reality and fiction in one's own thoughts is an important aspect of development errors in thinking that uh, can influence uh, the ability to distinguish between reality and fiction in one's own thoughts is an important aspect of the development errors in thinking can influence behavior and lead to anxiety yeah reality testing highlights the importance of recognizing common errors in one's thinking and correcting them uh, route B, the dangers of false hope. You stated that false hope can lead, lead to, uh, uh, they have powerful opinions, these leaders that you stated, but you didn't actually give names. So uh, having false hope is morally wrong if the hope is based on co uh, culpable ignorance and may harm the interest of others. Like, like imagine like, uh, you know, Ms. Ms. Mo Ms. mostly, you know, hits the doctors as the doctors, you know, are professionally trained, but some doctors like they, they, they give out false hope to the parents, you know, this, your son is going to be fine, but could end up dead, you know. Uh, false hope can change one's confidence and is mostly a big mistake with doctors, you know. In novels and movies, there's a lot of false hope where the president promises something but doesn't deliver. That that That's mostly where it happens and where it starts. The negative side is basically what we're trying to give, the, uh, we're trying to make you see the, the things that, 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 that you cannot see because, because, because of all this uh, 
negative and optimistic so the future is going to be great the future is going to be right i mean you you don't see the world today where it's mostly not sustainable like the, uh, even the world right now you know with political readers and all that kind of stuff they're trying to figure out you know global warming and all that kind of stuff they're all trying to figure out one and one only thing uh you know uh, building a big infrastructure uh uh, building and making structure a more sustainable life that's what that's what they're all trying to do all this to say that prediction should be negative and not optimistic because that because the, what this can do is create false hope of have you ever heard of the phrase in you tomorrow or a bright future is ahead i mean that that's what basically uh you know trying to give hope for the people but maybe the hope the hope cannot uh, cannot be right for them uh, root C, how it helps people change their ideas and possibly make uh, make or promote. If the political fiction is wrong, then it will influence others to listen to the wrong. Like, like if someone states that 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 could be wrong, then that 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 kind of person will understand what's wrong. Because like if if they think throw, I've said that uh, reality check, you know, creates wrong. Before getting to before I get ahead, uh, any POIs? Right, thank you. Um, you've spoken, you've spoken a lot about reality check. Now we want you believe in making a conducive environment for the work of the government, or would you rather leave impediments that can actually be removed? Can you repeat? You spoke Therapy. about the American struggles. You characterized a struggling environment whereby somebody triumphs through. Do you believe in removing impediments that would be removable? It can, it can be removable because in, in America, in America, basically, what happened was that it was basically a weak country back then in the day, like 1800s. They fought many wars. This is the, the reality of it. Not, not what I'm trying to take it that it's just politics, basically. It's filled with war and greed. That's the, that's the world. That's the reality. Uh, that's my speech. Thank you. All right, I thank the speaker for the fine speech. Let's welcome DPM. Thank you. That's my speech. Yeah. That's um, thank you. My name is Zephyr. Um, my pronouns are she. I think they disconnected. Uh, okay, let's wait up to five minutes, I think. I'm back? Oh, yes, I'm back. Um, I'm sorry for that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'm trying to get serious. Okay, let's see. The DVD to you all. My name is Zephyr. My speech will be starting in five, four, three, two, one. Hano, fiction is unreal. Fiction is very unreal. In this debate, we concede to impact of expression and we accept people's ideas, but we also focus on the power of our voice and the power of our narrative. You see, in this debate, we're wondering, what is the impact of our voice? A voice that sound can make you, can break you, can change your mindset and the way you think. We are crafted by what we had as children from when we were born. So we find that how real the narrative we tell is highly crucial, especially in today's day and era. First, I'm going to characterize the situation that we're in. The situation of the movie industry, which was characterized my info slide is that they have real life experiences because they found these are the most profitable. They're looking at high emphasis on historically accurate situations. What do I mean by this? They're going to say that situation A can lead to situation B. B may lead to C. C could probably lead to D. And then they'll conclude that A leads to D. But when we realize in this debate that this takes a more conspiracy theory kind of turn, and A under no circumstances can lead to D. So by using facts, they make people believe situations that aren't there. When you pair such a mindset with adding, high-end actors who are perfect at creating illusions that don't exist, as well as technology such as 3D, 4D, even 7D technology these days, you realize that this is not a safe world to be putting people in because it can alter our mindset. What's the next thing we realize in this debate? We realize that it yields the question, can human beings actually resist the mindset in that can inception actually exist in a modern day world? We realize that yes, it does. In a coronavirus pandemic, people are known to carry out something called doom scrolling, whereby they continuously read information true or untrue, 
and they were practically addicted to they follow such information so people actually gain interest a lot of people ended up getting low self-esteem low mental health because of such situations so realize that it is actually very possible in this debate now what's a worst case scenario for you we have to actually say a worst case scenario what's the scenario in today's debate we see that one can't identify in this fiction who the bad person is so it's fiction or there are no real names you don't know if it's a senator you don't know which member of congress it is so you tend to generalize the whole government rather than identify one particular person so you don't know who the problem is so you generalize everyone else as the issue so what's our case approach first we have two exclaimers i mean two disclaimers one we do not the narrative we support in our world in that we offer a reduction in negativity one, because this negativity is entry in the first place, and yet it has an effect. So we tend to offer a reduction in such negativity, but not removing it completely because we believe in expression, we believe in opinions coming. But secondly, we encourage non-fiction. What do I mean by this? Non-fiction is purely researched information whereby one is so confident in such information that they can include actual names, actual cite actual resources whereby they prove these situations. They've been written on President Putin, they've been written on Biden, Trump, and we accept such information. But in a case that this is something somebody dreamed out, in fact, it could probably be something someone had in a dream and they're exacting this as reality, we feel because of its strong effect, it should not be considered as much as honest, good opinions in today's world for the issues characterized in today's debate. Now, we recognize three stakeholders. First of all, the government and the army themselves. You realize that we recognize these people putting a lot of effort, a lot of knowledge into running the country particular way. You can imagine sending off your husband in the army to fight a war and then him being characterized as a double agent and traitor to the government. That wouldn't make you feel right when you put out a sacrifice and it's not considered. And that's what we are considering in this debate. The workers who put in a lot of effort and then they are summarized as a whole as false people. But secondly, the people, their mental state and stamina, even just from COVID-19, cannot be further ruptured by the current status quo by dominant mindset saying that the government is against us all the time because this is the time most things tend to take. So you can't tune somebody's mind to identify only the negatives. They watch the news. A child has died. Oh no, it's a government. A drug war is going on. No, the government's actually supports the drug war. An election result, they don't take you know what, I read this book, I watched this movie whereby the government is against people or a new bill that they don't like and automatically blame the government. Such a cycle of negativity can't be incorporated in today's world. It's a very dangerous and you cannot take out literally somebody's eyes and then later on reproach them for being blind. Because if that's what people are always seeing, it's eventually going to become their general mindset in today's debate. Now, what's our rebuttals? We don't say in this debate, why would you actually encourage more negative media to be put in? It's imaginary and it's impactful. Those are two dangerous things in today's debate. In today's debate. So first of all, they brought a case of easy decisions whereby they said a reality check world is full of wars and this is being characterized as a war today's debate is a war whereby the negative media should exist i mean that's an environment that people have dealt with before but to realize just because someone has overcome a dangerous environment doesn't mean they should continue to be putting themselves in dangerous environments especially when it's a dangerous environment you can actually control as an individual we see that we believe in removing what is removable fix what is fixable don't kill a person with cancer treat them remove the flow and keep living your life we see another case here where they talk about how powerful opinions are true. They characterize some of these fictional ideas as true, but no panel. None of them are true. No writer of a fictional book can come forward and exclaim that our information is actually true. No, if it was true, you'd have characterized it as non-fiction and actually would have generated a higher market because people are more interested in what's the truth. That's why they work with reality. But you realize that Fiction is not real. That's we think it should not be a premise in this debate. We feel like it should not be a premise actually in the debate of the world, in the way people think, in their mindset and decision making process. But then again, the benefits of our model. Our first thing about is our benefits of our model has a better mindset, hope and trust inside in people whereby people are more comfortable with their government. They stop looking at them as false people. They encourage to look at the values of it, the education they brought up, the wars they are fighting, the countries they are helping, less of the false ideas whereby they felt at one point in such a time the government did this one thing. I explained how some of these cases are historically accurate in that they follow actual back in the day formation. They can take the assassination of a president and tie a whole web of activities that surrounded it. And you feel like this isn't fair. 
People shouldn't be overthinking and generating anxiety where it shouldn't even be in the first place. But then hope and trust in our government, whereby we encourage a group of people who actually have a proper amount of faith in their government, because our government is trustworthy. Not everyone in the thousands of people in our government infrastructure can be bad. If there were, there are certain organizations and bodies in check who are supposed to be working this out, not the overactive mind of a citizen at night and not the mind of a movie writer in the middle of his writing session, basically. So I'll take any POIs at this point. Um, there was a POI from the Prime Minister. Is there any POI? All right. Conclusively in this debate, we have a case of two worlds. One is a world whereby we can allow imaginary and impactful information to keep on dominating the media, to keep on dominating our mindsets and ideas in daily society. And we have another world whereby we are looking at a combination of honest opinions, whether honest or not, but true opinions, good opinions, opinions that are not going to cause people to generate rare psychological problems because they are thinking of unreal items. We are looking at the value of stakeholders such as the governments and armies in today's status quo. We are looking at the contribution of these people. But I would like to end this debate. If you're going to forget everything I've said in today's debate, let's acknowledge citizens' power of our government. Citizens can react to what the government is forward. They can react to the status quo said by governments. They can riot. They can go against them. Why are we putting these on them? Panel impact and imagination are two things that should never coexist in today's society in today's debate especially in the rise of social media whereby information can be spread in no time i conclude this debate by saying side opposite side affirmative has definitely won this debate thank you very much i thank the speaker for the fine speech now let's welcome dio here Uh, am I seen and heard? Yeah, you are. Okay, so I am going to start in three, two, one. People tend to have, people tend to like having positive views rather than negative and pessimistic views, because and only because it encourages people to be more positive and in some cases unrealistic. This can put people down by making them think that they are capable of doing something they aren't. Rebuttals. First speaker. As the proposition team come in good faith, the first speaker is implementing that. They are not taking away negative or pessimistic views when that is what the motion says and that is what they should be proposing to. They should be proposing that they should remove these negative and pessimistic views when they are not. And the second speaker has not spoken about the related topic in my point of view, basically, uh, for me to rebut on, but has actually said some points to solidify our points. Uh, now onto my argu point, uh, argument, sorry. Points to talk about and focus here. Firstly, we're gonna start with root A. If propaganda was negative and pessimistic, less people are eager to be influenced by it. It won't encourage a particular synth synthesis or perception and will also show the reality of things. This is one of our strong points in this debate. Propaganda is basically the communication that is primarily, primarily uh, used to influence or persuade an audience to further an agenda, which may or may not be objective uh, and of may include selectively, no, thank you, selectively uh, presenting fact to encourage a particular synthesis or perception, or using loaded language to elicit an emotion rather than rational response, uh, the information being presented. Point number two. Propaganda is, wisely, is widely known to be encouraging and somewhat positive. It's, it's, uh, it's the factors that make it uh, deceive people. Take an example of World War II, the famous We Can Do It by Westinghouse. It was meant to be positive and encouraging. Now let's say it, it is put in a pessimistic way. Don't you think that they will have less influence on people? This is an example of a harmless propaganda. However, if the same logic was applied to be a more influential propaganda, do you think people will follow it? 
if it's not the reality? I personally don't think so. Point number two. It is simply showing the real situation with a filter like the book that is in the motion as an example, 1984. It was, it was published in 1949 where the novel explains the negative effect of a person who went to a party and so on and he didn't like and so the the basically what happened in the story is that they they didn't show the right side of the story the reason why it's a good thing to reduce propaganda though propaganda is a potent weapon in conflict in certain circumstances it is used to dehumanize and instill hatred against a perceived adversary whether internal or foreign, by instilling a false image in the minds of troops and populations. Point number three. One story might change if the story is portrayed in a, in, uh, a positive matter. For example, there is a Net Netflix documentary that goes by the name El Chapo. This next Netflix uh, documentary is a story of a drug cartel who, who sell drugs in Mexico. His story was por por portrayed not, uh, I'm not saying that it was portrayed positively by any means. I'm saying that it wasn't portrayed right. This, this is one of the effects that can happen if you try to portray everything uh, positively and encouragingly. So if the story was put to the point, this, uh, it will come to uh, your knowing, but Actually, Netflix sued El Chapo for not being uh, to the point. Here, here I will tell you. It is a story of drug cartel El Chapo who sold drugs in Mexico. His story was, was portrayed not necessarily positively, but the story was portrayed to look better in the eyes of the viewer. Is the show El Chapo accurate? The, next, the Netflix drama show explored the lives of of the notorious El Chapo Guzman. But did, did most of the events depicted happen in real life? Uh, the, way, the way they did in the series, it did not. Most of, most of the developments on the show and series do not, uh, most, of you, most of you hear uh, that, sorry. Okay, most of the developments on the show are historically accurate. Most, so not all. This lead, uh, led to the wife of El Chapo suing Netflix, but not getting much out of it. Most, most of, you hear that, but not all of. Some, some people who watch the series still do not know about the re reality of the series. False hope is, what, uh, is an argument that the first speaker of the proposition team had mentioned. Uh, yeah. So false hope is shown in most of these series around the world. And this is showing people that they can do something that is unrealistic, which might affect their life if they are not capable. Do I have any POIs? Anyone? Do you feel that um, propaganda happens on our side alone or does it also happen on your side? Propaganda happens on both sides. You cannot uh, ask this question because I think it is not too relevant because propaganda happens in both sides of the story, uh, in both sides of our world, because it is something that can affect the negative and positive side at the same time. And uh, yeah, that is the end of my uh, argument and I am proud to oppose. Uh, oppose. All right, I thank the speaker for the fine speech. Let's welcome Government Wood. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Nella Barth, and I will start my turn. Okay. So I'm going to start my speech in three, two, one. Cannot, the anger cannot be given to one man, right? So, okay, no. Cannot, let's first look at what side position. 
perhaps your opposition brings it to this debate, right? First of all, they analyze the argument in that first speech as, you know, reducing propaganda, right? Right, but panel, let's first, you know, they talk about propaganda as how it will be reduced on their side of the case. No analysis here. They talk about, you know, uh, like they give an example of a drug cartel in Mexico, right? Al Chapo, right? But how they were tra you know, portrayed positively in the, in the eyes of the you are, even though they had committed heinous crimes. But Pana, let's analyze that there was no kind of explanation on how this benefits in this debate. There was no linkage on how it affects any kind of stakeholders in this debate. There was no linkage to any specific point in this particular debate. Pana, when we asked them a POI on the point of propaganda, right? What did they tell us, right? They, they told us that propaganda happens on both sides, right? But so they consider the fact that propaganda also happens their side of the case. But when, let's not confuse ourselves, right? Let's first understand what propaganda means, right? Information, especially, you know, uh, of a bias or misleading nature, right? Used to promote, uh, used to promote a political or cause or point of view, right? So Pano, why do we feel that there's actually more propaganda on their side of the case, right? But when you have a kind of uh, uh when you kind of promote a kind of fiction in 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 in, uh, in, in society, right? A negative fiction, right? You find that even though fiction is untrue, it has the ability to influence a lot of people, right? A lot of people take it up to be, you know, kind of real because you know they they believe they believe that uh that the books have, they attach significant values to these particular books that we read, right? So what do, what happens here is that it creates a kind of stereotype about these particular politicians in society, right? So these stereotypes may not necessarily be untrue, but they are only one side of the story, right? So it's not a complete truth. So you find that people are going to not trust politicians, aka the government. They're going to have a kind of biasness towards government. This is a kind of propaganda that's promoted towards, you know, politicians in this debate. So you find that on their side of the case, they are trying to promote a kind of, you know, negative, they kind of remove any kind of negative, uh, sorry, a, a, a crime to remove any kind of positive or optimistic ideology. They are promoting a world where politicians are uh, they are promoting a world where politicians are regarded are, are regarded as what as as negative individuals, right? And this particularly harms society. Why? Because governments, right? Governments who are looking towards protecting, you know, uh, sorry, to provide for their citizens, right? Through that the social contract theory, it's very difficult because you know when you're providing policies and making laws, you need to have a kind of collaborations with the people you're working with. Say, for example, there's a kind of conflict existing in society, you need to work hand in hand with the system to identify what the problem is. But with the kind of biases that exist, people will not look to uh, to their government for any kind of source of help or security. There are other look for alternative ways. What does this look like? You say people, you know, joining gangs to try to protect themselves because they no longer have feel that they have trust in their government to protect them. What happens here is it leads to you know gang-related violence where kids are, are made to join uh are made to join a particular gang in order to protect themselves. So in the event that you know that that you are trying to remove any kind of positivity from society, you find that on site opposition case, it's going to actually harm majorly children, the stakeholders in the debate. It's going to harm citizens of a country because they no longer feel uh, the need to trust governments. Then moving on, they talk about how you know it's uh it, it, it talk about how we need to uh, uh, establish right the ability to distinguish, to distinguish what is, you know, reality from what is fantasy. You know, like the treat outside of the case, like some kind of fantasy that, you know, promoting a kind of positive outlook is actually detrimental. But Pano, let me disprove this by saying that having hope in something does not mean that, you know, it is a, it is a kind of a fruitless event, right? You know, they talk about how, uh, they, and I quote, you know, uh, uh, like uh, the promoting falsehood that a bright future is ahead. But Pano, let's analyze the problems of having no hope at all, right? Having no trust in your government at all and thinking that the world is full of chaos and so forth. You're going to find individuals no longer caring in any kind of democratic citizen, right? You find people not caring to it took words, right? Making decisions that are going to benefit them. Why? Because they have their generalized ideology that everyone <laughs> in their government is corrupt, that everyone in their government is 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 uh is very unfair and biased. 
So you find that individuals are no longer going to care about who they got in power because they believe all politicians I know are going to be that particular way. So you find that even in the event that you want to, you know, to remove any kind of bias, to remove any kind of, you know, that ideology that 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 politicians are good, you're going to find it needing to more corruption because you are not making any kind of informed decision in society. And then secondly, when this when when you promote this kind of ideology that these people are negative, that politicians are negative, you have to also analyze how it affects these particular individuals in, in, in particular. You're going to find people are attacking, you know, because like they have that mindset of how, you know, that every politician is somehow negative or, or, or negatively affects, you know, development, economic, social, you know, political development, that it, it, it's always the problem of the politicians. So you find here that, that there's going to be a lot of backers from politicians who in other words, had nothing to do with, you know, had nothing or actually have nothing to do with corruption and actually change from what good is that. But because of this, they're going to be actually uh, deterred away from joining these political roles, which even leaves, gives a new way for negative individuals, for people who don't care at all, whose only main L is, you know, profit and actually making money, who don't care. Because, you know, the righteous individuals, they're like, oh, well, look here. My work, I'm trying to do something good here, but since you're treating me this way, even though I'm trying to do something good here, let me just leave, you know, to, you know, let me go away. So people are going to, it, it, it's going to cause more people, like uh, very bad individuals, to join those kinds of, you know, policies, and then it's going to come, you know? Yeah. So what side position fails to analyze is the debate, right? So they argue that in our side of the debate, we want to promote a kind of society where we remove all kind of, you know, negativity. But Pando, let me read it for you, because side opposition has failed to understand that it prefers a world where majority of political uh, fiction is positive and um, optimistic, right? We are promoting one majority, not necessarily moving all kinds of negativity, but Panda, we are promoting a world where there is majority of it is positive so that we can have a more impactful society to the stakeholders, aka the government and its citizens, right? Unlike the world where we have a majority being negative, which then harms society in the ways I've explained this debate. But Panda, what do we prove in our debate? Number one, we prove the dangers of we put the dangers of, of, of not having any kind of particular hope in our development as a country or a developing country in, in, in this case, Uganda, by believing that everything is always going to be uh, harmful or wrong or about our political system. And then secondly, we prove that the importance, right, on our side of the case of having hope, right, of having trust in and 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 and, and in our government, right, in the event that even though some politicians are corrupt, we still show you how it is important, you know, to have a certain kind of hope. And then thirdly, we prove that the, 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 the kind of vastness that happens on their side of the case towards a generalized way of like uh, showing how all politicians are going to be biased <laughs> into a particular way or type. So in these reasons, I beg to rest by saying that side proposition clearly takes this to them. Well, I think the speaker for the speech must welcome uh, Opposition Whip. Hey, here. Is Op Whip here? Yes, I'm here. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Give me again. One, two, three. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In today's debate, we, as team opposition, have presented you with our argument regarding the motion. This helps refers a world where a majority of political faction is positive and optimistic, e.g., with wing west, etc., rather than negative with us taking the negative side and preferring to have majority of negative and pessimistic novels 
rather than their fear, which is the positive and optimistic. And we have presented you with, as the opposition team with some arguments that proves that the majority of state faction sh fiction should be negative for everyone's sake and enjoyment. As we know, politics have been and will always be an, a sensitive topic around the people when they try to, and people try to avoid it as much as possible unless there is no other way for them. So when the first, with the first fraction of political faction came out in the betrothal in the 18th, in the 18th, it was quite the shock. It was quite the new thing. It was quite the, it was quite the wave that came to them as it spoke boldly about the political side and whatnot. All right. And we believe as the opposition side that should, there, there should be majority of negative content that is dedicated towards this topic. What our first speaker had stated and claimed was that the novels or shows will give people a sense of reality, more realistic and better, and prevent giving viewers and readers or everyone else false hope. In our desired world, by giving people a roof of expectation to what and how does the political <laughs> What? Point of information. All right. Um, your side characterizes negative media as honest media. We talk about documentaries. Are you aware that documentaries are non-fiction? Most honest media is non-fiction. And this debate is about fiction, imagination, basically. All right, I'll answer that later on. Now to continue with what I have been saying. In our desired world, we're giving people a roof of expectation to what and how does the political field look like slash works like. We are given a much more realistic view on the subject matter because political, political, politi politi politics has never been easy or optimistic as it is for as it is far too complicated to be anything but dark. And if by chance it turns out that there is a positive and optimistic side to it. It could be a facade or it could be much more complicated story behind the scenes. What they said, as the first speaker of the, uh, as the first speaker of the other team had said, that that say dark media creates, a, uh, dark media distends the people from the government and positive media brings them closer and make their bones much more tight and much more, and they make it make the citizen much more trustful of their government and the authority. We have, uh, we have to have a clue on what happens. As we have to have a clue on what happens, affects how we view the government. Uh, lying about, they say that it's lying about politicians, they lie about the people who are in power and paint uh, the government, politician, all the people and authorities in a bad light, make them seem as the bad guys that could never be redeemed. The people who are uh, irredeemable, while on their side of the house, by giving them the best and the positive contact, we are making these people, politicians and authorities and otherwise, uh, people who are aiming to help, who are may aiming to construct the country and make it into a better place and protect, uh, protecting and uh, trusting, the, and which leads to the people protecting and trusting the system and being much more, uh, being much more capable of uh, accepting the, and cooperating with the government. Why is it wrong? We have said and stated before that people actions toward authorities are not the responsibility of the book slash series that they are, and they are rational people and human beings that are capable of creating their own conclusion, opinions, and decisions. You are simply not covering up the fact that they are beating up. You say that the people would feel like they are being misled, they feel like they are living in an unjust world. There are governments which try to cover up the facts 
but still get leaked their punishment, corporal punishments, and the painful, uh, the painful consequences that come to people that might not even have made a mistake. You are asking us to trust our government blindly, like the citizen of America had trusted their government in the 80s, only for the citizens of the lower class to be killed mercilessly, but with toxins, with toxin waste, because people were told that they are be that they are being hit by the Russian, by the by the Russian uh by the Russian rockets and what else. So as I say, as I've been saying, the trust and blind trust with to these people and the government is not going to get you anywhere. Second, the second speaker had our second speaker had claimed that in a world where the majority of the of the political faction are negative, it that it that it reduced propaganda. Uh, and which is something every sound citizen will be relieved to let happen as more and as more and more people will acknowledge the dangers of propaganda and how it affects the people and therefore they will be much more immune and much more cautious and careful around these kind of strategies and there's got this kind of situation where certain people in power trying to take these people under their wing in order for nefarious or I'll tell your motives. What they have said is that it makes people paranoid. People reading these factions and being or being much more cautious toward their government will make them paranoid. Will be afraid of cooperating, which is not what is supposed to happen. We are saying that they will be much more cautious and careful, not be entirely uncooperative with their system. They also say that keeping that reading this would keep them in the old mindset. In the worst case scenario, that they'll become aggressive toward the government as politician and what else. And I have had st stated before that that will not happen if they were if they were rational human being. And why is it wrong again and again and again? We stated that people have rational thoughts, people have rational feelings, and they will be able to judge and make their own decision. And the reading of the of the faction and the shows Wait, are nothing but nothing but mere but near moment and of enjoyment that they have from the tv or the book and we have presented you today with the reasons that with the reason our opposition team should win that would, uh, by not following the positive approach but following the negative approach and why is it going to be helpful and keep people safe in the long run from the from the from the negative political influence if it existed as they had claimed thank you I thank the speaker for the speech. Let's welcome opposition reply. Am I seen and heard? Yeah. Okay. So I'll start in three, two, one. To start off with my first point, the proposition team are proposing that there is more propaganda of their side of the case. When I tell you not, and we have mentioned a couple of times in our, um, in our arguments from first to second speaker. They, they also said that we are regarding po politicians as negative and we have never mentioned such thing, which is also, which also said that we are suggesting there should be no hope in the world where we also never mentioned such thing. They, they mentioned that there should be, uh, be no hope in the world, but we are only suggesting that there should not be false hope in politician fiction. They also made it clear that they are not proposing uh, the motion, what the motion suggests exactly, but are proposing only what they want to propose. For example, they said that they do not want to remove all negativity from from uh, political fiction. Secondly, they said that uh, they want to. Uh, they're not trying to remove all of the. Uh, 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 sorry, the um, pes pessimisticness in uh, political political fiction. And they also made it clear that uh, they are only proposing what they want to propose, but not proposing what the motion is telling them to propose. Uh, and now I would sum up everything that happened in our debate from our side of the world. First opposition team, uh, uh, which is our first speaker, is help, 
we uh, suggested that we are helping people think more objectively rather than, rather than subjectively. We have also stated that what reality check uh, is and stated examples while, while their structure is all over the place. Uh, we've also stated definitions, examples, that's why our stance still stands. And uh, what our opposition second speaker has mentioned that he was talking about, uh, I was talking about uh, having uh, uh, people rather having positive uh, uh, views than having negative pessimistic views because it is only what they want to see and not they do not want to see the reality of the negative and pessimistic side of things. And our third and final speech has helped us balance out everything. And thank you very much. And that is my reply speech. All right, I thank the speaker for the speech. Now let's welcome Gov reply. Am I audible and visible? So um, how my grandma will be doing the third um, reply speech for side negative. Am I still audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start my speech in three, two, one. Panel, false hope is better than no hope at all. If we did not have hope in the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, would we still be living till today? We affirm this motion in favor of development. First of all, side negative mischaracterizes the motion, right? This debate clearly specified preferring a world where a majority of political fiction is positive and optimistic, which means, panel, in this debate today, we do not take away negative and pessimistic fiction, but we make majority positive and optimistic, right? Moving on, secondly, to propaganda, right? They concede to the fact that propaganda exists on both sides of the house, right, panel? But then we come and clearly show to you that our propaganda is actually better if it did exist on our side of the house, right? Panel, we have to understand that. Let's quote from them. Politics has always been a sensitive topic in humanity, right? Now, panel, let's see a world where you pick people with negativity. You keep telling them that posit negative politics are negative, politicians are bad, politicians throw our money, right? It pushes these people, right? If majority of the information they watch is bad, right? As analyzed from the past, right? It pushes them to actually believe the things and take them up and pushes them to actually do negative things right it tapers with the rationality of the human being pushing them to do things that they wouldn't actually want to do right which is like public systems which in the end of the run um gives harm to them which actually characterized you from our first speech but is not handled adequately right secondly distinguishing between reality and fiction panel not that this debate is about which fiction is better which is negative or positive fiction right fiction about like what in politics Politics, right? Fiction is not real things, right? You have to understand. Fiction is fake things, as was actually characterized in Africa. Before I showed you, non political fiction movies can actually take inspiration from a war that happened, but they do not necessarily create the content of the war. They lie about the war, right? They add in things, they put things, they change dates, they just write fake things, right? They this is the reality that these guys claim, which is actually fiction. Pano, we believe they fall out. Secondly, they come and tell us Americans trust governments blindly, right? Pano, we believe that this debate this debate today. And kill these different, shut them up, and all those things. They create this kind of public discourse because they are harming other citizens there. Eh? And that is. A to support, to support our about the good side of everything. Then we still bring out that but we raise really oh, sorry, I think you're lagging. the negative and like we moderate the negative points of view, right? That is the world that we preach as side affirmative today, right? Tano, two things we actually analyze in our case today, right? A, why trust is particularly important in the development of the nation and we get them a comparative analysis how their world actually takes away government trust and when government trust is actually taken away, we cannot see development of 
policies because people do not trust their garments, you cannot see accountability because people will not actually be pushed to actually work on their garments. But finally, we we'll show you how it actually leads to public discourse, which can't actually lead to the development of the nation. These are all mechanisms that they don't actually talk when they're speeches, right? Secondly, we come and show you in our further analysis how their propaganda that they actually claim is actually worse off on their side of the house, given the fact that they coerce people, right, with their negative ideologies. They push people to actually believe these negative ideologies because they are the majority, which actually leads to more public discourse. And like when this public discourse actually happens, the impacts actually far worse on their side of the house and on our world, while we show you a better working society, right? We might have some wrong things in our society, but our society is actually more sustainable and like more working together than the society that they actually preach, right? Panel. First of all, three things that they don't do in their speech, right? They give us no responses to how our world doesn't work, no responses to the mechanisms that we actually give them. Secondly, they come and give us no clear analysis or no clear mechanisms about how all the claims that they actually make. And finally, panel. We rest our cases by saying that we win this debate today because we show you how rationality actually works and how like reality actually looks like in the vast majority of instances, other than the world that they actually fix the body. Thank you very much. All right, I thank the speaker for the speech and thanks everyone for the debate. So I'm gonna stop. Wait, wait, let me record first. All right. Okay, I'm gonna start my OAN in three, two, one, go. So uh, we, as a panel, all agree that this debate is a bit messy. Overall, we still saw at least a big clash or like two big clashes in this debate. Uh, and overall, we gave a unanimous decision to proposition. Congratulations and commiserations. So what we saw here is firstly, there is a clash about trust and distrust and whether that's a good thing. So on government, we think they gave us a lot more effort on what that trust might look like and what impact will bring. So what we got was that when, uh, when you have more positive fictions, you're able to have a better governmental system because on opposition side, people are likely going to generalize the government because they don't actually see like individual characters in the movies. Therefore, they create an antagonistic view of us, uh, us versus them narrative between people and the government. The problem will be there is firstly things like very low voter turnout, and therefore the government that even if it's elected has little accountability, and awful gov government is going to likely make bad policies if they know that people don't trust them. Secondly, people are not able to access government help because they're not willing to in the first place. So in things like developing, uh, like in conditions like developing countries, they're often even times going to turn to rebels for help, or they are going to like rebel against the government. And the impact of these will be uh, less peace and sustainability that is important for developing countries. So they think that on government, even if it's not like true and accurate hope, at least with this, uh, with the trust of government and with the hope, people are able to have more engagement with the government and have the will to just uh, like have discourse. On opposition, what we heard was that this is ultimately a false hope. I think our problem with opposition, although to be honest, the panel didn't really buy all government's mechanism because we were unclear as to how the government is integral in the first place. At least what we heard from opposition is that this is just a false hope because firstly, it's factually not true. So the comparative on their side is that they have things like reality check. But I think government did point out that this is not really the debate because both sides are defending fictions. And therefore, if opposition wants things like reality check, it should appear in things like documentary, which is out of the debate. Secondly, opposition talked about how people now are going to blindly trust the government and it's bad. And we heard examples like Chapel, for example, but we think the impact was really unclear. So what people are actually going to do with this false hope is unclear. And more importantly, I think the government's case doesn't really hinge on the like the whole hope being true. I think what government, uh, what what proposition proves is at least people are willing to engage with the system and willing to follow government rules in a like at certain times, right? Thirdly, what opposition told us in terms of this is that, that having a sense of real reality is good because people are able to distinguish between probably generally more like what are right and wrong in society. I think the problem is it was not really pushed forward as to why it's very important. Opposition whip also kind of contradicted it by saying that people are generally rational on both sides. So we are also unclear why that accrues on opposition. And that's why ultimately we gave this like most important discussion with government. Now there is another thing, uh, like another discussion about propaganda, which I think was not clearly delivered in the case. That's why we as a panel actually struggled as to what impacting that propaganda looks like. I think opposition pointed out that government probably has more pro propaganda, uh, bad propaganda, such as dehumanizing people, things like that. And 
if the propaganda becomes very negative, people don't follow. But we think these two framings are kind of a bit contradictory, and we don't actually think opposition proved like why on proposition side there is negative propaganda or just overall bad propaganda, and people are going to buy into it as long as you agree that people are probably rational in the first place. So I think overall that propaganda as like compared uh, like also along with your false hope that isn't really the like tipping point for a government to prove that government's case of trust is actually like false trust or is going to lead to more harm. So that's overall what we see as a case. Uh, I'm going to first give some general feedback and I think later on we can approach uh, you can approach panels for individual feedback. So generally because we think this debate wasn't really clear in any places. The first uh, feedback I would give is to try to make your arguments clear, especially in terms of telling us what the linkage to the debate is. So if you're talking about propaganda or if you're talking about a certain con uh, certain setting, for example, it's in developing countries and why sustainability is very important. I think these are the things that you should flag out, especially in the claim of your argument and, uh, and don't make the claim of your argument a sentence and or an example because we were not sure what a, that actually leads to. Secondly, I think mechanisms are important, yes, but sometimes mechanisms also include uh, preemptions for both sides. So I think for a government, for example, it is better for you to explicitly tell us why even if it's false hope, it's still better than not having hope. I think I did hear this weighing in, I think government reply, but this could be flagged out more clearly. And thirdly, I think in terms of engagement, both sides actually didn't really engage with each other to the uh, fullest ex extent. For example, we think that opposition's argument of sense of re reality is actually a legitimate argument and can actually be uh, flagged out more but unfortunately, it wasn't really clear to the panel what the impacting was. But I think in order for a government case to be better, you can actually engage that to a greater extent of how people on your side are still able to be like rationally distinguishing between propaganda and things like that. And also the relation of propaganda, like government directly putting propaganda in fictions uh, compared to fictions that are created by media in of itself. I think these are the things that both sides can actually try to make clear. So apologies if it's a short OA, but I think it's more important in this round to approach feedback. So yeah, uh, does anyone have any questions or want to approach feedback? No, thank you. We thank you so much for your time and for all your feedback. Thank you so much. We love you. Uh, and Team Oman. You can as well, Ness, for your answer. All right. Thanks, everyone, for the round. If you also want feedback, we have a wonderful panel. So please approach the panel. You can also approach me on Discord for feedback. And for the recording, uh, who should I send it to? Sorry, I forgot who was the one asking for recording. Yes, hello. Um, thank you so much for recording. Uh, can I just send my email? Probably you, it has me into something which may make me to access uh, the recording. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, sure. I can send it to your email. Yeah, let me uh, paste it in the chat space.